Today's story finds us in the American state of Nebraska, more specifically, the city of Omaha. Back in June of 2001, this was the home of 19-year-old Jason Jolkowski. Jason was born on June 24, 1981, to Jim and Kelly Jolkowski. The couple also had a younger son named Michael. For the most part, Jason led a pretty normal life. He and his family lived in the Benson neighborhood of Omaha. Jason attended Iowa Western Community College in nearby Council Bluffs, Iowa. Here, he was enrolled in the radio broadcasting program. Jason had many passions, but radio broadcast was at the top of the list. Family says that Jason's ultimate goal was to one day become a radio DJ at the Iowa-based radio station, KIWR. Despite his dreams of following a career path that would somewhat put him in the public eye, Jason was said to be a shy and quiet kid. He mostly kept to himself and had only a handful of close friends. When Jason wasn't attending school or hanging home with his family, he worked a part-time gig at the local Fazoli's restaurant on Cass Street. Jason's boss and co-workers recall how hardworking the young man was. He was extremely dependable and could always be expected to show up right on time when he had a shift. Though he did well at Fazoli's, the job was definitely temporary for Jason. With the help of his uncle, he recently obtained a new position as a customer service rep with another local company. The job would not only pay more, but they also offered a tuition program that would help Jason pay for school. So it was pretty much a win-win and Jason was set to start there within the next few weeks. Life was moving at a steady pace for the 19-year-old. It seemed that Jason had everything to look forward to. The road ahead should have, without a doubt, been a smooth one. June 13, 2001 was a Wednesday. The weather in Omaha was nice and warm. This began as a perfectly normal day. That morning, Jason's parents had departed for work and his younger brother had already gone to school for the day. Jason's shift at Fazoli's was set for later that evening around 5.30 p.m. But his boss would call shortly after 10 a.m. and ask if Jason was able to come in early to cover for an absent worker. Never one to turn down extra hours, Jason agreed to come in. Unfortunately, the vehicle he typically drove was still in the shop that day for some repairs. So Jason informed his boss that he'd have to make the trip to Fazoli's on foot. Upon hearing this, Jason's boss told him that he'd have a co-worker come pick him up from home as the restaurant was already pretty busy. Wanting to be as helpful as possible, Jason came up with a better idea. He'd meet the co-worker in the parking lot of Benson High School. The school was located about halfway between Jason's home and the restaurant. On foot, it should have taken Jason about 10 minutes in total to reach. So with the plan set in motion, Jason hung up the phone and quickly showered and dressed so he could leave the house. On his way out, he pulled the family's trash cans back up from the end of the driveway and put them in the garage. He was observed by one of his neighbors heading up the sidewalk en route to Benson High School. This, however, would be the last time Jason Jolkowski was ever seen. Around 11.15 a.m., the co-worker tasked with picking up Jason was starting to grow impatient. He definitely should have arrived by then, and she was wondering what the holdup might be. She decided to head over to a nearby gas station where she used a payphone and called the boss back at Fazoli's. He advised her to head back to the high school and wait just a little bit longer as he believed Jason must just be running late. But after another 10 minutes went by, Jason still hadn't arrived. So the co-worker headed back to Fazoli's and informed the boss that Jason never showed up. As mentioned, Jason was known for always being on time. So his boss was quite puzzled to learn that he never arrived at the high school. He decided to make a call to Jason's house to see what was going on. Jason's younger brother, who was now home, would be the one to answer this call. Once it was determined that Jason was not at home, nor had he made it to work as planned, alarm bells went off. Jason's brother would notify his parents, who would then make a call to police. Jason's parents were understandably worried. 
It wasn't like their son to miss work, and he definitely wasn't one to run off without telling anyone. But the local police didn't seem to share this concern. Their initial theory was that Jason had just run away and would return on his own sooner or later. In fact, it would take them about a week to even begin an official investigation into his disappearance. But when things finally did pick up speed, authorities used all their resources to find answers. There was a large search effort throughout Jason's neighborhood and the surrounding areas. And in the weeks following his disappearance, nearly 100 people would be interviewed and questioned. This included friends of Jason and nearly everyone that lived in his neighborhood. But when it was all said and done, police were left with absolutely no clues whatsoever. It was as if Jason simply vanished into thin air. It's important to note that authorities took the step of checking security cameras that should have captured Jason's walk that day. This included the cameras at Benson High School, as well as those set up along Bedford Avenue. Bedford Avenue is a major street that Jason would have had to walk along in order to reach the high school. Strangely, none of these cameras picked up any images of Jason that morning at all. This prompted police to believe that whatever happened to him occurred very shortly after he left his home en route to Benson High. But that begs the question, what exactly could have gone wrong in that short time frame? Jason was a guy with very few friends and definitely no enemies, so that rules out the possibility that someone had it out for him. Furthermore, Jason was far from small. He stood at six foot one and weighed about 180 pounds. If this was a random case of kidnapping, why would anyone pick him of all people? There's just so many things about this case that make no sense at all. One investigator remarked that in his 30 year career, this was the most baffling case he'd ever come across. As of today, it's been almost 23 years since Jason Jokowski disappeared. If still alive, he'd be 42 years old. This case continues to haunt the Jokowski family as well as the residents of Omaha. Up until that point, this had been a cozy and quiet community. No one ever could have predicted something like this would happen there. Years after the disappearance, Jason's mother Kelly would create an organization called Project Jason. This effort would serve to assist other families in dealing with the disappearance of a loved one. Kelly, along with Jason's father and younger brother, still hold on to hope that they'll one day learn what happened to their loved one. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you found this story interesting, click here to check out another case.